Welcome to MA3D1, the Warwick Maths module on fluid dynamics. This video is about conservation of momentum. Let us recap with uh, the result from the law of conservation of an abstract quantity B. Written in integral form, the conservation draw law is written here. In this video, we are going to consider momentum for this abstract quantity B, which is a rank one tensor, because momentum is a vector. The density, oh, actually momentum is mass times velocity. So its density is mass per unit volume times velocity. Uh, and we also know that rate of change of momentum is a force. So the generation rate of momentum are all forces. For example, the volumetric generation rate is rho times g or is written as rho times g and it is called the body force or a volumetric force or a volumetric force density. An example of a volumetric force or a body force is the force of gravity. The force of gravity acts per unit mass so you can in order to convert that into per unit volume you multiply it by density where g is the acceleration due to gravity. Even if the uh, body force is not due to gravity in a, any particular example, for example, uh, if the force is due to uh, magnetism that is distributed throughout the fluid or an electrostatic charge uh, and the, the force comes from electrostatics, we are still going to represent the body force by this symbol G in the most common case, it will be gravity, but it can also represent other sources of force. And the final uh, source of uh, force, the source of momentum, is uh, the surface term. Because momentum is a rank one tensor, there is one index in these dots, which I will call I. And the resulting second rank tensor Tijb is called the Cauchy stress tensor. In fact, we are going to drop the B from the superscript and just call it Tij. This tensor represents the force transmitted across surfaces. Now let us see what the law of conservation uh, says for momentum. Let us first write conservation of momentum in integral form. We have the time rate of change of the total momentum inside a volume following the volume is the sum of the body force acting on the volume or the volumetric force acting on the volume and the force exerted by the fluid surrounding the volume through the surface. The same expression is written in index notation on the right hand side throughout this video. So first version, uh, this is the first version of conservation of momentum in integral form. The second version one can derive is by applying Reynolds transfer theorem to the left hand side. When you do that, the left hand side splits into two terms. The rate of change of momentum inside a fixed volume, because now the time derivative is inside, the volume can be considered fixed, plus an integral that comes from the surface of that volume. And this integral can be interpreted as follows. U dot NDA, we know, is the rate at which fluid flows in through an infinitesimal area DA of the surface. So this is the volumetric rate of fluid flowing in. And rho U is the volumetric density of momentum. So this product is the rate at which momentum flows in through the surface. All right? In fact, it is momentum flowing out uh, through the surface, out of the volume. So these two terms can be interpreted as the rate of change of momentum uh, within the volume uh, is a sum of the rate of change uh, uh, arising due to the forces acting on the volume and due to the fact that the flow carries some of the momentum out of the volume. Okay? 
the same expression is written in terms of index notation on the right. Uh, the third version is der derived by applying divergence theorem to the two surface integrals. Let me fix this. This is supposed to be d omega. When you apply divergence theorem uh, to the first term, we get the divergence of rho u u. In this case, u u is interpreted as the vec uh, the tensor product or the outward product of these two vectors. And uh, the second time you apply divergence theorem is to the tensor t, the stress tensor t, and you get the divergence of that tensor. I've taken both these terms uh, from the right hand side to the left hand side and written as the integral of this quantity over any volume omega must vanish. And the same expression is written in index form. And one application of this form of uh, the conservation of momentum is that now we can derive a differential form. This integral vanishes for every volume omega if the integrand vanishes everywhere and that is the differential that is the first version of the differential form of conservation of momentum uh, we have this is interpreted i will present an interpretation shortly but before we do the interpretation let me point out a mathematical identity that arises which is if we look at the left hand side and let's do this with index notation because it is easier to do with the index notation and we apply the product rule on these two terms such that from the first term we take out the density and keep the velocity inside and from the second term we take out rho times uj outside and keep the velocity inside ui inside and that's how we have obtained the first term and the remaining terms are taking the ui outside and keeping everything else inside ui d rho dt plus the jth derivative of rho uj with a sum implied over j and you'll recognize from the video on mass conservation that this statement is equal to zero according to the differential form of conservation of mass and secondly you will notice that the expression inside the square brackets here is nothing but the acceleration a which you will remember from uh, the video on Lagrangian and Eulerian descriptions. So now the second version of uh, conservation of momentum in differential form is rho times the acceleration which is written here as the material derivative of velocity is equal to the volumetric density of force or the body force plus the divergence of the stress tensor. And now we have an interpretation of the divergence of the stress tensor. The divergence of the stress tensor is nothing but the surface force per unit volume acting on an infinitesimal volume. Okay, You can see that here. Divergence of T times d omega came directly from the term here. And this was the surface force acting on a volume, uh, on the volume omega. Now it is transformed into a surface force acting on the volume omega, but written as a volume integral. And now when we look at, when we take out the density of it, then it must be the surface force per unit volume acting on an infinitesimal volume. All right. So the three terms here can be interpreted as rho, the mass, per unit volume times acceleration, body force per unit volume, and surface force per unit volume, all three of them for an infinitesimal volume. So this ends the video on law of conservation of momentum. I will see you in the next video or in one of the live sessions. Bye-bye.